everyone, I'm Joanna Penn from the creativepen.com and today I'm here with Terry Giuliano Long. Terry is the author of In Lear's Wake, the winner of the literary fiction category of the Indie Reader Discovery Awards. The independently published book has also sold over 100,000 copies, so welcome Terry. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Oh, it's great to have you on the show. So tell us a bit more about you and your writing background. Um, I am. T I started writing in Leah's Wake for my master's thesis, oh my gosh, um, years ago. And um, I really came from a more traditional kind of a background. I teach writing at Boston College, and, um, and my, my friends are all traditionally published and so I had at least way kind of made the rounds and and um was it was one of those books you know it was sort of a lot of people have had this experience where it was almost picked up and you know that it it, it didn't it wasn't ultimately uh, picked up but I did sell it to a small publisher and then that contract fell through I put it away in a drawer so it was kind of had this long roundabout history you know and uh and I just kind of kept tinkering with it and tinkering with it but I wasn't really going anywhere I decided to stop just let it go. And uh, I started a new book, uh, Nowhere to Run, which I'm in the process of finishing now. And when I started to make halfway there, I thought, you know, the self-publishing has gotten, has gotten really popular. It seems like a good avenue. It would be a great way to build a platform. And so I decided to self-publish in Leah's Wake. And um, it's been a great experience. It truly was one of the best things I've, um, professionally that I've ever done for myself. Oh, brilliant. Now, I I wanted to talk to you because I was challenged on a, a radio show the other week and they said to me, um, you know, where are the self-published, uh, you know, literary fiction authors who are doing well? Um, and their the basic point was that only genre fiction sells okay. well on Amazon. You know, only genre okay. fiction is making money. So um, can you talk about, you know, how did you sell a hundred, over 100,000 copies? How did you do it? You know, that's a, I, that, I, that it really is a problem, and I do think that there are more literary people getting into self-publishing now, but I think that one of the problems, well, there, there are a couple of different problems as I see it anyway. First of all, a lot of literary people are kind of snobby, you know, in the sense that mm -hmm. you're, you're, a lot of people have backgrounds in MFAs or, you know, that sort of thing, and they feel that traditional publishing is really the only way to go, and, you know, so there is that kind of a problem. So I think you're not getting a lot of people doing it. Um, but the other problem, too, is that literary fiction a lot of times just has a smaller audience and by, by nature. You know, and Lee's Wake is not, it, it's not a book where a whole lot of exciting things happen. You know, there are no zombies. There's nothing paranormal. There are no <laughs> werewolves, you know. Um, and it's not, a, it's not a big romance. It's a, it's a family story. And so those sorts of stories, I think, a lot of times... Um, they're just sometimes people feel that they want to just get away from life, and I, you know, understandably so. And you know, so they want to read something that's just sort of fun and light. Um, and again, literary novels tend not to be that way so much. You know, my my novel is is very dark in a lot of ways. You know, I feel it's hopeful. I try to make it hopeful. I think um, to me, it's hopeful. But you know, there. So those are those problems. I think people writing in the literary genre encounter to begin with. Um, I I think I've done a lot of different kinds of PR, uh, in term, a lot of different kinds of marketing in terms of, um, you know, reaching out and, and doing a lot of cross-promotion with other authors, and I think that's certainly played a part in it. I've given away a lot of books. Um, mm. When I first started, you know, I was involved in this, um, in a blog hop. And on the blog hop, if people leave comments, you give your book away for free. And so I gave hundreds of books away that way. I did an author buzz promotion where, again, I gave away a couple hundred books. And I think that kind of goodwill, you know, the, the ability to sort of reach out and, and connect with readers directly was really great for me. I think it's great for a literary book because, um, again, people, where it's so personal, people have mm -hmm. that kind of a connection. Um, the other thing that I think, and, I, you know, I, I always, I feel a little funny saying this because I think, you know, I don't, I, I hate to pat myself on the back and, you know, say, oh, I'm so wonderful, whatever, but I think that In Leah's Wake is a story about a, young, a family where the teenage daughter is a really good kid, uh, very successful, successful, normal family, and she starts, she just is wanting to grow up, you know, she meets this guy, he's kind of a kind of bad news and gets involved with him and goes down this drinking and drug path 
And I think that's something that resonates with people because so many people have had that problem. Um, mm. I do get, I, I just had a, a, a beautiful note the other day from a woman who said, I feel like you're writing my story. I had the same situation with my child. Um, so I feel like I got lucky in the sense that maybe I hit the zeitgeist, if you will, um, where it is, is a story that I think resonates. It, it's such a topical story. Mm. Um, so I think in that sense, it, that helped my book along as well, too. Mm. Now, that's a good point because, um, you know, we're often, when we talk about PR and about what is newsworthy, the fact mm -hmm. that you've written a book is not newsworthy at all. You know, nobody cares when we write a book. Exactly. But what you've picked up there, you know, the teenage daughter, you know, getting in with the wrong crowd, that's the sort of non-fiction piece behind your fiction isn't it? So is that what yes. you focused on with all of your kind of interviews and getting out there? You know, when I first started doing interviews, to tell you the truth, when I, I, when I first put the book out, I didn't do any marketing at all because I was just so, it, I just wasn't, this wasn't my, my natural world. I've come to really love it and appreciate it. I'm so glad I did it, but it's hard, you know, it was hard mm. for me to interview. Um, I don't really like talking about myself. So that was hard for me, um, to kind of get used to. Um, so I didn't, and I guess what I'm saying is in the beginning, I didn't even really know what to, f to focus on. I always talked about this idea of t teenagers, and, and I have this like, the idea that kids are good kids, and they just want to grow up, and, you know, we were kind of going through all this time in the U.S. I, I don't know if you have the same in the U.K., but this zero-tolerance policy where, you know, mm -hmm. if a kid is... Um, if a kid gets in trouble, they're kicked off a team. And, you know, sometimes sports teams are the best thing to, that can happen to a kid that's it can keep them out of trouble it can keep them moving forward and I felt that to 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 alienate the, the, the children to alienate these teenagers from the one thing that you know really could center them it just was really wrong-headed and um and, and I knew a lot of people that it happened to and so I focused a lot on that in interviews and you you mentioned then uh, about how when this first started out you didn't feel happy about doing interviews you didn't really know what you were doing but that you're glad you did it so can you talk about how authors can learn marketing because for many people they kind of like well I don't I can't do this um, well you know I, when I I said a few minutes ago that a lot of literary people and and, and I don't want to cast dispersions you know uh, across the genre but I came from that world where people felt that they had to publish in a certain way and and so to me you know and I always heard in fact oh, this is just this will kind of tell you I had I was talking to a friend about it uh, about my book and you know it had sold at this point I don't know 90,000 copies or something and she said to me oh so you self-publishers that means then you bought copies of everybody else's book and they've all bought copies of yours right <laughs> you know and I yeah, for that amount well, of money. <laughs> right, exactly. So, um, you know, I, I try to help help out people when I can, for sure. And, you know, it's not that I don't ever buy books, but no, I, I didn't buy 90,000 books. Um, so I think that there is that sort of um, perception in, or, or used to be, it's, it really is changing. There used to be that perception in the traditional world that self-publishing really was just, you know, for people who couldn't make it anywhere else. And I found since I've done it, that that, first of all, those attitudes have started to change. Second, um, it's, it's a good thing, you know, it's really not, it's a way of taking, for me anyway, it's been a way of taking control of my career. You know, for years, I sat around in that kind of traditional world thinking, oh, I hope somebody takes this novel, or how can I make it better, or what can, you know, and at some point, you're just tinkering, you're really not doing anything, and, and so, to me, that was just, it was depressing, I wasn't going anywhere, I was just constantly feeling like I was spinning my wheels. Um, so once I started to realize that, okay, marketing, it doesn't necessarily have to be just all about me, me, me. It's not about going on Twitter and saying, hi, buy my book, you know, read my book. It, it really isn't like that. It's about, excuse me, relationships. And, and that's something I, I do enjoy. And that's something I think I am okay at. So once I've reframed it that way and recognized what it really truly is and got rid of my own prejudice, I guess I, guess I want to say, um, things just really changed for me. And I started to see it as a way of self-publishing and marketing as a way of, as I said, taking control of my career and, and directing it and trying to figure out, okay, well, where do I want to go next? And, I mean, it's been it's been a journey for sure. Um, I'm very lucky. I work, I know, I think you know Donna Brown. She's, she's a really wonderful, uh, I work with her. And so, you know, she's, I 
we bounce a lot of ideas off of each other. She comes up with some really great events, but we just try to have fun. And it's so for me, that's been the big the big part of it. You know, just reaching out, talking to people, forming relationships, and just having a good time. Mm, I think that's important. So let's get back on the on the stigma because I saw on your blog um, that you posted some comments about Sue Grafton. Um, she had said yeah. some she'd said some things and she's apologised. Um, you, maybe you could just you know talk a bit about uh, that because I think people will be mm-hmm. interested and also you know how you see things having changed. Mm-hmm. That's a really great question, Joanna. Um, you know, Sue Grafton said something to the effect of uh, the only people who self-publish are, or people who self-publish are lazy. They do this because it's an easy way out. It takes years of uh, practice and submissions and rejection. And so, so self-publishers just, they, they, essentially she was saying, you know, we just barf out things on paper, put it up on the internet and, and be done with it. And then go around saying, hey, I buy my book. And it's just, that's really not what it is. And I did respect the fact that she apologized. I think, you know, she mm-hmm. was from, I, I told you what my friend said to me, you know, did you buy all those books? And I think it's that kind of um, belief out there. People who are not involved in the industry just really don't know what's in, what is involved. I don't think they know how hard most self-publishers today, we don't. I mean, I spent years writing my book. It wasn't something that I just, you know, woke up one day and threw on paper and put up. Um, I had, my book was professionally edited. Most people I know are today professionally edited. Mm-hmm. We're, we're getting professionals to do our designs. We're getting professionals to do our covers. So really, it's, it's we are, the, the stigma, I think, is, is displaced. I think there are, unfortunately, some self-publishers who do do those terrible things, you know, who do write a book in an afternoon and throw it up on the internet. But I think that, by and large, people who are self-publishing are, are serious writers, serious authors. I've met so many of them. Um, you know, pe- people like you, people, you know, people are people who are, you know, care about, uh, really care about literature, care about writing, care about books, are getting involved in one way or another in this industry. And so I think that in that sense, the industry itself has changed. The industry is involved. It's become a lot, become a lot more professional. Mm-hmm. There are people are being trying to sort of develop standards, and 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 we're trying to hold ourselves to them. So I think that that's changing. I've been doing a lot of writing about about self publishing. I do a I'm a contributing writer for Indie Reader, and so I do a lot of um, work for them. And so I've interviewed had a wonderful opportunity to interview interview a lot of different people uh, for this and everybody the people that I'm interviewing the 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 authors are again very professional very conscious conscientious and professional as any traditional writer Um, and also the agents that I'm talking to I've had really great response for them in the very the first time I interviewed people they were sort of saying well the self-publishing thing we don't really know about it and now I don't know maybe six months has elapsed and these same people are coming back to me saying you know I want to get involved in this. I, I have clients. I'm, I'm advising my clients to self-publish because mm-hmm. it's a good way to do it. Um, people today are are choosing their publishing path, and this is one of the things I think is the most exciting that's happened in the industry. So you have people may traditionally publish one book because it requ- they, they want to get it in bookstores, for example. They may take another book that has, say, topical interest and self-publish that because mm-hmm. it can just be done a little bit faster, um, a little bit less of a timeline. Publishers are also changing the way the agent, I spoke with an agent, uh, Amanda Hawkins' agent, actually, mm-hmm. the other day, and he was telling me that publishers are changing the way they're doing business. They're bringing books to market faster. They're acquiring self-published books, and they're bringing them to market quickly to kind of take advantage of these um the marketing efforts that, that we're making. So I think that the entire industry really has changed. Um, I think it's and it's it's a, it's a great place to be, I think. Mm. It's funny because um, one of the, my immediate response to the, you know, there's all this crap on Amazon is that um, they sink to the bottom. All the bad books sink to the bottom because of reviews. And I want to bring up reviews because we've just seen today as we speak, um, that basically there's been this sort of firestorm that people have been paying for reviews. There was a company set up to actually put on fake reviews. And John Locke, you know, the infamous indie, has been sort of, uh, you know, 
put out there and there's a guy in England, Stephen Leather, he's also been accused of, of these fake reviews and it's very discouraging to me because reviews were my last kind of port of call. I would say to people, well, if you know, if a book gets good reviews, then it's all right, you know. What, so what do you think about this whole scandal? Oh, you know, I just, the whole review thing is, is just, is so, it, it's just fraught with so many different kinds of issues, you know. Um, I mean, on the one hand, there is a, so I, 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 the, I don't know if the article you're referring to was in the New York Times. It was the same yeah. article was, yeah. like, okay, in the Times mm-hmm. the other day. Uh, you know, and um, that that's a hard ethical call. I think there is that assumption that, you know, people buy those reviews and they're going to be good reviews. And I can understand why people are up in arms about that. Mm-hmm. Um, on the same hand, though, there are, are paid for reviews by places like Kirkus or Publishers Weekly that really are legitimate reviews, even though they charge people to do them, you know, so, so you do have a little bit of a question there. One of the things that always I get frustrated with uh, are, is that th- there are, on the one hand, people fake positive reviews. On the other hand, there are people who, I guess I want to, I guess I want to say, you know, kind of get a charge out of posting negative reviews too. Mm. Mm. You know, so you've got, so I think that you've got a lot of disingenuous, I guess, I would say, reviews on both ends of the spectrum. And we always focus on authors, you know, kind of scamming reviews, trying to get positive reviews. And then on the other hand, we don't really say anything about the the reviews that are, you know, and I'm not talking about legitimate, I'm not, I think legitimate, Hmm. to me, a legitimate review says, I like the book for this reason, or I didn't like it for this reason, and it gives back up good good some kind of evidence to support that claim and to me that's a legitimate good review and whether it's positive or negative if it's one star or five stars if the person says if if it's constructive you know but you get these reviews by adoring fans on the one hand and then on the other hand you'll get reviews by people who will say things like um my my fifth grader could have written that book, you know, and it's just. It's... I would, um, I'd urge people, you know, just to be honest. If you like a book, leave a nice review. Um, I personally have a rule that if I don't like a book, I don't leave a review. Full stop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I only review happily, like four and five stars, and um, and yeah, and don't don't. Well, I think the buying reviews is not the Kirkus, which is like five hundred dollars for one review. Yes. It was right. sort of five hundred dollars for fifty reviews which yes, is kind yes. of a different matter. So yes, I, um, I think in general we should just try and stand for honesty and authenticity. Yes. And, uh, yeah, that's that's where I am. And I'm going to keep reviewing. And I appreciate reviews on my books as you do. So interesting. I think, I think this market's really emerging and we're going to see a lot of change coming up. So, okay, so t- tell us uh, where people can find you online. I am... Very visible on my blog. That is Terry T E R R I G Long dot com backslash blog. That you can get to it from my regular website, which is tglong dot com. It's a little easier. So there's a button for the blog, and I'm on most of the major sites. I don't do a whole lot on Goodreads. Um, I pop in there from time to time. I'm on Facebook. I think it's uh, Terry G Long writes T G Long on Twitter. Uh, LinkedIn. <laughs> so, on, so on, so on, and everywhere. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> and, and in Leah's Wake is on Amazon and everywhere else. Right now, Leah's Wake is on KDP Select on Amazon, but uh, that's a trial, so we'll <laughs> see. Even. It will be, we're actually in the process of a redesign, so it will be on everywhere else soon, yes. Fantastic. Well, thanks ever so much for your time, Terry. That was great. Oh, thank you, Joanna. I really appreciate you having me on. It was fun to be here. It was great to chat with you and wonderful to finally meet you. Good luck with all your books.